Well, hello again. Welcome back to another deep dive featuring the Sony PVM 1344Q CRT monitor. I'd like to go over some of the cool details on this old school retro CRT because in today's environment, this is still a lovely machine and it has so many great uses, especially for anything that involves analog video that I really think it deserves a little bit of attention. Let's start with some features on this monitor. First off, it does have a better than 600 TV line display tube. It's also marketed as being a super fine pitch Trinitron tube inside. And really all that means is that's a selling point where Sony would explain that they had a super fine pitch in their aperture grill, which was part of the Trinitron technology that was different from any other CRT during this time period. Now this PVM was manufactured in 1993 and this was right during the time when Sony would have still had their patent uh, law in place for the Sony Trinitron, meaning they would have not given anybody else the rights to really make a Trinitron tube and then they would have sold it on the technology based inside of it and that is the single gun technology where it has one single electron gun and then the specific aperture grill and a tube also is only curved on one side as it's not curved vertically like you would have in shadow mass tubes during this time period. All right, so before we get too much further on this monitor, we're gonna open it up, take a look inside, do some servicing, and then we can move on to some of the amazing gameplay footage I've got for you. One of the first things we're gonna do is remove our shell here on our PVM, and that is to remove four screws on the back side, and then you'll have three screws on each side normally. They're all Phillips head screws. Remove those, and then we can remove the shell, please. Please, whatever you do, do not try to remove these rivets right here and remove just the shell and leave this plastic backing. That's not a good way to do that. And we're ready to remove the back shell now. This one has probably not been removed in a while, so I'm gonna get it to the edge of my table here so that this plastic edge piece kind of hangs over a little bit. That way I can wiggle it loose a little bit from that bottom. And then we'll slowly back it out. All right, we've removed the shell and we're gonna get in here and inspect inside this a little bit closer. And uh, to be frank with you, this is actually one of the cleanest uh, Sony PVMs from 1993 that I've ever opened and seen, especially considering that I don't believe anyone's ever really serviced it. So my assumption is this one was not something that was heavily used and it was obviously not used in an environment that was dusty or anything, so that's really Really a good sign for this machine at this point. And I uh, just want to show you some of the important stuff inside this monitor. First off, if we look down here, we're going to get close to our uh, flyback assembly over here. And that is uh, an area of high voltage. And then over in this area, I want to just point out some um, parts that will generate a lot of heat. And those are good areas to inspect. So obviously over here, is our horizontal deflection area and uh, then there's a ton of transistors and regulators down in there you see by that potentiometer and those coil inductors over here these this area uh, on this board will generate a fair amount of heat as it is in operation and then if we look on the power supply this is another area up here that is going to be our hotter area and we're going to get a lot of heat from those uh, resistors and parts generating our and converting our DC current and things like that around to the monitor. So those are all good areas to definitely take a look at and inspect. But if I look in here at these capacitors, they all look great. I don't see a hot, lot of wear and tear on anything. It really just needs a little bit of a cleanup. This is our vertical deflection circuitry around here. Uh, but the more important thing again is this deflection adjustment area and we've got potentiometers down here and if you closely see we have a we have a key here on the side that tells us 
it, the small arrows will point to which potentiometer does which. We've got horizontal size, underscan, horizontal size, underscan, vertical size, pin amp, pin phase, uh, vertical picture bow, vertical angle, vertical linearity. I know you can't see those. They're blocked by that piece of plastic here, but that's what they say. And then you've got vertical center, um, maybe horizontal bow, video phase. And then there are a couple of other potentiometers inside here um, that you may have to adjust. There's a horizontal center adjustment, and this is always in the worst spot. I'm, it just has to do with the circuitry most of all, and it's less about convenience. This is your horizontal center potentiometer. That's really one of the hardest things to adjust on this monitor is just that little potentiometer because you have to stick your hand in the high voltage area. Uh, other adjustments, we've got our uh, color and video processing board on this side of the monitor. And then we've got a sub board, the V board here. And that allows you to adjust things like colors, pretty much just blue and red, and then your sub brightness. Now the other things to always consider is your neck board. You see we've got our focus potentiometer on the other side here in our screen, which is our G2 voltage, and that's just your brightness. Now, sometimes these controls will be on the actual flyback assembly somewhere, but that's not the case here. The biggest thing to check for on your neck boards are going to be uh, pretty much, in my experience, it's going to be cold solder joints, especially on these connection areas and up along the back of the neck board. It's always worth checking and doing a good inspection and uh, reflowing solder on any points that look shaky. For example, you'll get places over here where you could eventually have cold solder joints. So um, you see how that solder is starting to give that ring effect right there. That looks like, uh, see, this looks like someplace that uh, I'd recommend probably considering reflowing solder on this neck board before I close this up. I'm going to recommend that to the client because this could eventually develop uh, worse and over time and that that will cause the monitor to just pretty much turn off you'll turn it on you won't get any response if one of these uh, goes cold then we have our rings of doom here and who is the lord of the rings i'm not sure but whoever can conquer these is the lord of the rings as far as i'm concerned these rings of course control screen purity and then convergence uh, for our blue and uh, or for our beams here. That's how you line them up. This one was set at the factory and then epoxied into place and Hopefully that's good enough. We also do have some convergence strips in here that were set by the factory And here's a purity magnet on this side and then down on that end We have a purity magnet just to help balance the purity. There's some dust on the tube and uh, other components, but not a whole lot now this contraption over here is on these older Sony PVMs. It is the uh, resistor assembly, high voltage resistor assembly. And this part unfortunately can go bad on other models of this monitor. It seems to be pretty stable on this version, but uh, it's a it's this part altogether is just a pain in the neck. Thankfully, Sony got rid of it later down the line because it's a proprietary part and once it went out of production, it pretty much became impossible to find. So if it goes bad, it can pretty much screw up the whole monitor. All right, guys, we're going to remove this neck board just so we can get a closer look at it. And I want to show you some of the uh, potentiometers just a little bit closer. And then I'm going to personally inspect it a little bit more and probably, again, flow the solder, reflow that solder on some of these points. Uh, and uh, we'll get this board service and it'll be good to go for a long time. We're just going to disconnect the wires on here. And then slowly pull back, trying to keep those pins straight. And that's really all there is on this particular uh, neck board now. Fortunately, this plastic stuff never really, <laughs> never really lives. It uh, it just imagine it manages to always fall apart. So you saw how calm and 
everything I was on this plastic when I was removing it, I didn't do anything aggressive and it's still just, it starts to disintegrate over time. There's a closer look at these two potentiometers. Again, you've got your screen slash G2 voltage adjustment and then your focus adjustment. And then finally, we've got horizontal static convergence adjustment, which I didn't show you earlier, and that will help us align our beams horizontally across the screen when we do uh, check our convergence. All right, everybody, this is uh, the board here. Just show you a close up again of my biggest concerns are just around points like we have here. See, like the solder is just appearing to start to wear out. Check out that G1. See how it's just starting to look like, you know, after a couple more years, especially if you use this thing a lot, there's a good chance that you could get a cold solder break on there. We're going to go ahead and reflow a lot of the major points here on this part and then all our major uh, transistors on our board will probably touch up and then we'll go and check out our connections and we'll retouch up the solder on this and especially on our two adjustment points. Let's do that now. Here's our finished neck board that's been serviced and it's been thoroughly cleaned. I just want to show you some of these points closer and we can see the beautiful solder that we have now on this neck board, especially at these connection points going directly into the tube and that'll be good for a long time. And everything on this end of the board has been reflowed. A closer look at these connection points. Nice solder on there. And all the resistors, caps, diodes, etc. Transistors, all is looking really nice and clean. And now, since that's been serviced, we can bring the monitor back in here and reassemble it and start testing and adjusting it. All right, reinstalling our neck board is pretty simple on this monitor. All we've got to do is make sure that we connect it correctly. And we've got a couple of cables to do that. First, we can start at the bottom, connect the cable that communicates with the main board. And then you've got also a ground connection over here on the opposite side. 
And before you connect the last connection up here to the corner, let's go ahead and reseat the yoke on the tube itself. And I've lined up the holes. You can kind of see, sorry if you're losing focus there, but what I'm gonna do is there's a center point on this neck board right here. And you pretty much can sit your thumb there, balance the board and try to push it till it gets all the way seated. And that's safe and a nice effective way to do that. Then we'll connect our last cable and then uh, our cable management stuff over here. We've got some clips and hooks we can replace and put back in their spots. Let's go ahead now and power the monitor back on. Hopefully we did everything okay and we'll see. There we go. We got a green power indicator down here in the LED. It sounded normal and now our screen is coming into view. And there we go. We can see our Teamio's lovely face and the 240p test suite. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to let this warm up. And to warm up, I need to let it run for exactly 30 minutes. And then after that, I'll go in and check out some test patterns and see if we can make any adjustments. It looks like just right away we might need to move this vertical uh, positioning up a little bit, expand that maybe. And uh, not much else though, it looks pretty good. Maybe a focus adjustment too. Our monitor has been running solidly for about the last hour and it has been already adjusted. Uh, I went ahead after it warmed up and got into this test suite and I'm gonna show you some patterns in a second, but if you need help adjusting your monitor, I do have another video, I'll tag it up here in the corner. You can go check that out and uh, see me adjust each one of those potentiometers individually and see how it looks on the screen. But for today, we're going to look at the test patterns and the most important test pattern to look at is our monoscope pattern from Keith Rainey. Um, first off, you'll notice we do have a bit of an overscanned image and that is to give it the uh, perfect aspect ratio as well as expand it out as far as basically it can go horizontally and then it has to be stretched vertically to match that four by three aspect ratio. And that can be checked by simply measuring each side of this cube here. And then the same thing with the larger box uh, that is in the red. You can press the A button and dim the white lines and keep just that. You can, again, check those, make sure they're all the same, relatively the same size. And then you've got perfect aspect ratio for the most part. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown here in a minute on the buttons because if you're in RGB mode like I am in right now, some of these buttons will not do anything. For example, if you press blue only or HV delay, those don't work at all in your RGB mode. You have to be in one of the other uh, regular NTSC PAL CCAM modes on line A, B or Y slash C slash S video. And then you can use your blue only or HV delay. Now underscan will work. And again, that's helpful to check. You can adjust underscan values if you want to. All our colors kind of set pretty well. There is a shaded box in here that has three individual cubes and you want that to be just very barely visible in the best case scenario, which it is here on this tube. And that probably won't even show up on the video screen. If we look at our linearity, it's difficult to see the linearity on the regular size screen, but you can go in and check it a little bit closer on this underscan screen. And you can see how all the circles match up and are, and are pretty round. I like to check this screen, the white, black, red, green, blue screens, just to make sure there's no purity issues. That's really good to check for that. See if we have any kind of screen tearing or if the linearity shows on this, it shows really well. If something just doesn't look right, this is a good test pattern. Um, and then we can switch that to have it go vertically instead of just horizontally and check to see if we have the same issues there. And it looks like we have a pretty good dialed in screen, especially for something this old and manual from 1993. So we have a line A that does composite and a line B that does composite. And then this is that YC or S video input along with the VTR input right over here, which is pretty much a dead technology that no one uses anymore. There is no output on this line, so you can't daisy chain anything out of the S video, but you can daisy chain out of the line A and line B composite mode. And even your RGB or component video mode can run 
a daisy chain out from this to another device and get signals that way. The monitor is self-terminating, so you don't need any 75 ohm terminators on it. There are a couple controls over here on the right hand side. And that is first the color temperature selector. We have 6500 and 9300. And then under that, we have our selection switch to switch between component video or RGB, where right now we're in RGB. And finally, here this is a V hold adjustment. And so if you get this monitor and turn it on and you have scrolling vertically where the screen is just scrolling vertically up or down and won't stop, adjust this potentiometer or wheel a knob right here and it will correct that. Hey, if you like this episode, please make sure to leave me a like. And if you have any comments, leave them below. And also, if you want any more additional information on this style of a PVM and how to make adjustments, check out those linked videos. I'll have them in the description for the video. So hey, enjoy the rest of the video with that gameplay footage, and I will see you all next time with some more retro content.